Hi all, let's have a look at another exciting game from the TSEC Season 17 Super Final. So this is in round 29. Stockfish was playing white against Leela and the opening set was actually the Queen's engine defence. And if you remember the match in 2018 between Stockfish and Alpha Zero, one of the forerunner, you know, the the motivation, the inspiration of the Leela project, the Alpha Zero uh, chess entity, actually uh, scored very heavily with the white side of the Queen's engine defence. So we have Knight F6 from Leela playing black though in this game, C4, E6, and Knight F3. So there's side steps the Nimzo engine defense. If you want to play the Nimzo engine with black, you really need to know knight f3 as well. Knight c3 uh, allows this Nimzovichian pinning move, the Nimzo engine defense, which is very different territory in its own right to knight f3, but you need to know both with black. I believe a lot of the ideas, they're, they're shared sometimes, you know, trying to control e4 is a common pattern of both. Anyway, and b6 tries to control e4, so we have a3. This is a, a more novel move than in the Alpha Zero Stockfish match uh, of 2018, where the move g3 was played uh, a few times. So a3, we have c5, and this is the end of the book. Now Stockfish takes advantage here to take the opportunity for gaining a space advantage with d5. We have bishop a6. And now queen c2, and this is technically possible, this move. It doesn't lose the d5 pawn. It's a very, very nifty move, as well as protecting c4. e takes, c takes, and we have bishop e7. So the reason is, after knight takes d d5, there's a weakness of the last move. It neglects e4, and there's a check. And in fact, there's a loose rook on a8. So this configuration, uh, you might think, well, hold on. Is this the end of the story? If the queen is attempted to be trapped here, we have uh, a funny uh, variation like this, where in fact, uh, say knight d4 trying to trap the queen, it's at some cost. After e takes, white can just get a lot of material for that queen and be better here. So it is actually plausible to do that for white and gain a big advantage. So uh, bishop e7 was played, knight c3, black castles, g3. Rook e8, bishop g2, b5. So it looks as though b4 will energize uh, black a little bit, potentially, on the queen side. For the moment, Stockfish ignores that and castles. We have now d6. b4 locking down that queen side. That bishop looks a little bit silly now. On a6, knight bd7. Rook b1, queen b6, rook d1, rook a c8. And now b takes c5, knight takes, and now plunging into the uh, king side. So this is tempting dark square weaknesses around the king, and Leela obliges uh, with g6. We have queen f4, <coughs> on me. knight cd7, bishop b2 protecting that knight. It was hit just then. And looking at these uh, dark squares a bit, bishop f8. Knight d4. We can see that white stands quite comfortably here at this moment. That knight is pinned. We have bishop a1, bishop g7, queen d2 unpinning, knight c5, e3, knight c e4, hitting the queen. That's taken, hitting the queen again after taking bishop takes. Now, this you might think, hold on a sec, bishop takes, bishop takes, isn't the job of this bishop, a kind of guardian of these light squares. Would a human player play bishop takes routinely, or would we just be tempted to move our queen? Well, black does have uncomfortable pressure. It's, it's actually, uh, it seems a bit tricky where, where we would want to move our queen and leave that knight on e4. So it's an interesting decision, bishop takes e4. Uh, rook takes, rook dc1. We have rook takes, rook takes, bishop b7, and now queen d3. This is another little tricky move based on a potential for a weakness of the last move exploitation. We have rook e8. Here 
if black dares to take on d5 then check bishop f8 and there's a really super cool move in this variation can you spot it what would white play here which is rather strong indeed if I give you five seconds to pause the video white to play what would you play here okay the move is knight f5 so threatening uh, you know knight h6 because the, the bishops pinned and also queen takes d5 so if bishop moves knight h6 is checkmate that bishop is covering the escape squares so this would be a, a rather nifty move if g takes then queen takes d5 and then this is just better for white this position well it's it's gigantic if rook takes then uh there's another nice mate pattern here with queen g5 check and that's mating off the bishop g7 queen takes g7 so yes nice little tricks with d5 in this game so we have uh rook e8 the knight takes on b5 rather cheekily uh, so yeah it's 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 really really uh quite interesting but otherwise uh you know this the, there are other uh well the rook the rook is hit as well um so what what does actually black do so it was a, a double attack on the rook and the pawn so knight takes b5 a pawn up is this a stable pawn and you might think well can it really be a stable pawn because white has compromised surely these light squares uh, we have bishop takes rook takes bishop c8 and black is seeking to capitalize on these light square weaknesses um, in that uh, film queen of Katwe, um it was it was actually a moment in the film which w it was based on light square weaknesses he the coach did indicate oh you you know you allowed your opponent to capitalize on these or um, it was it was a dramatic point in the film. I thought it rung true that uh, yeah, it was interesting. So anyway, uh, Knight D4, Bishop H3. I would recommend checking that film. It's, it is one. It's a nice, inspiring chess movie, by the way, Queen of Catwe. So um, we have actually here. Okay, the Bishop eyeing these light squares. Queen B5, Queen D8. We have Rook E1, Queen E7, E4. We have Queen E5. Black is trying to be energetic, and we have Queen B4, which actually usefully protects E1. Uh, so safeguarding against very cheeky, uh, you know, tactics which now don't exist. Trying to mate, you know, capitalizing on this king, which hasn't got too many escape squares. A5. We have the queen coming back, keeping hold of E1 with Queen D2. Uh, we have now and and not taking on a5 so there's other concerns as well perhaps like f5 uh, maybe sometimes uh, so we have here queen f6 f3 rook b8 king f2 h5 and it's interesting that the king is coming out of its kind of uh coffin here it's uh and it and it's it actually gets rather outrageous now <laughs> stockfish actually gets extremely outrageous <clears throat> with this next move i wonder if you can guess why to play here what would you play in this position it is rather curious behavior indeed i would say so why to play here somehow it's worked out that this is one of the better moves in the position it's the move king e3 the king is going out for a walk <laughs> this is the daily exercise allowed in the in the uh, corona rise regime a bit of daily exercise here going out for a walk okay so queen g5 check it goes to e2 queen f6 rook c1 rook b7 king d3 you might think this this is isn't this a little bit weird uh white is though technically uh a, a pawn up and this this whole issue of 
you know the the light squares around the king is it's less than an issue issue now the king on on d3 uh we have uh queen d8 rook c6 which which captures some squares you know like b6 and a6 if the bishop wanted to bounce via c8 to a6 that's going to be a a little bit more challenging a4 queen c2 uh king h7 and in fact yeah this it's it's as if Leela's cracking up, giving up this other pawn. Why did it have to even play that? Well, that pawn is under fire. I mean, there is encroaching pressure on the black position. So yeah, it's uh, maybe Leela's getting a bit depressed. Okay, so Queen C two, King H seven, Queen takes A four, two pawns down. Uh, without any clear compensation here. Sure, the king looks a bit strange on D three though. H four, Queen D one. Bishop d7 and here actually just Queen c2 offering an exchange sack so this really says to the bishop look I don't care win the exchange uh, black ignores that and plays Queen a5 so the interesting moment here Bishop takes c6 what would really happen here it seems actually uh, that the a pawn after clamping down there the a pawn can just put the squeeze on and just carry through until you know the queen's going to be six to support a7 simple as that <laughs> and then queen takes c7 is, is threatened for queening and stuff like that or a8 and then queen takes so it's as simple as that uh so actually uh queen a5 we have rook c3 h3 okay installing a form pawn but it might not be winning in this game the dreaded form pawn especially with the king on d3 so we have queen c1 bishop e8 g4 bishop d7 and some high level uh, shuffling. Okay, g5 clamping down a bit more. The pawn's over there. An infiltration, an exchange of rooks. And the king goes to e3. And now, actually, after king d3 giving up g5 here, you might think, isn't this strange? Well, there's things like queen c7 here, if queen takes g5, putting pressure on the bishop and other squares. It looks as though. Um, as an example there's lots of things going on there it was ignored queen b6 queen b3 check and queen plunges into f1 we have uh, now white do does offer potentially uh, two pawns but the bishops hanging here queen takes g5 check f4 and black is now passive after winning that pawn so white's infiltrated and is able to play a4 looking forward to smashing through to the king here if the bishop dared take on a4 we have king g7 just to put that on the board if bishop takes a4 queen takes f7 and queen a7 white's getting a big advantage here controlling key things and also this pawn is potentially loose as well so uh we have king g7 a5 Bishop g4 and okay central check here and it looks like a consolidation task almost f5 of queen of one check check a form pawn installed black dare not go into this end game this pawn is just too powerful it's going to be queening easily uh, king h6 so just to put that on the board if queen takes f6 just taking and then a6 the bishop is pretty hopeless here after knight a4 knight b6 that's going to be winning a piece so king h6 we have queen takes d6 yes this does not look like good news at all for black this is not a good news bears position uh, so after bishop takes e2 yeah okay things are coming off but stockfish is pushing through more rapidly uh, these pawns queening first and it's all over bar the shouting so it carried on for a bit till checkmate here yeah so an interesting game uh round 29 uh we've had a string uh, in in more recent days uh of of draws so i thought i'd recap this this particular win uh I think the interesting point is the strolling around with the king away from the light square weaknesses as if you know maybe this is kind of 
a configuration thing where, where these light square weaknesses are weak. You can just compensate, you can just move your king out. Self service king safety was displayed here by Stockfish. And controlling uh, counterplay, willing to sack the exchange at a key moment. Uh, very good consolidation effort, as you might expect from the mighty Stockfish. So, well done, Stockfish, on this particular game. Very, very, very hard fought match is underway. You can follow the action at tsec chess.com. If you want to invite me for a turnstile casual game, by the way, uh, kingscrusher.tv or bit.ly slash chess world. There's also a lively chat thing, a suave chat thing at kingscrusher TV slash discord. There's playlists at bit.ly slash Leela chess, also bit.ly slash stockfish chess, uh, bit.ly slash Magnus Carlson chess as well. If you want to check out Magnus Carlson, the current world champion. Okay. Comments, questions, likes, shares, subscribes, appreciated. Thanks very much.